We're doing a beginner friendly project today and that's swapping out a broken port on this blue microphone. The tips and tricks that I'm gonna be using on this repair will apply to doing something similar on almost any 80s or 90s video game console that you guys might have seen on the channel. Broken ports make great beginner projects when you're just starting out. You can get away with using the bare essentials in terms of gear and uh, to make this repair translate to the widest beginner audience possible. The only tools that I plan to use today will be a soldering iron, some leaded solder, flux, and some braid. That means no desoldering gun and no hot air. It also means no nice to haves like tip tinner or any low melt alloys like chip quick. To take things a step further, I'm only gonna be using one tip on my iron today and that's just a regular sized conical tip. That means no J tip, no chisel tip, and no knife tip. A conical tip like this is not exactly my favorite tip to use on a repair like this, but oftentimes when you're starting out, your soldering iron kit only comes with one tip and usually it looks something like this. A basic toolkit like the one I just showed you will get you pretty far in the world of repair, but it's gonna have its limits. Now, if you're swapping out a DIN connector, no problem. A couple of barrel jacks, nice big pins, no problem. A voltage regulator, maybe a momentary switch even a mini USB. Once you get to micro USB, then you're kind of pushing your luck a little bit. A micro USB port like this is not something that I'd necessarily recommend that you try and tackle with the kind of toolkit that we're gonna be using here today. Once you get into those smaller connectors like micro USB, USB-C, HDMI, you're just gonna need a little bit more experience and a better assortment of tools at your disposal. All right, folks, let's get down to business. Now, uh, this is what we're dealing with today. This port is completely busted. Someone's definitely done a number on that port. Pins are all gone. It looks like whatever's left of that port is inside the microphone. Hopefully we're not dealing with ripped pads or broken traces here. Um, we'll just have to take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside. I'm also gonna see if I can pull this off without using my screwdriver bit set. So I'm just gonna be using this janky little screwdriver that I found in my toolbox. All four screws are out. This decal here is actually holding the two halves together. So let's try and soften that up with a hairdryer so that we don't damage the lettering. Came off super clean. There's only a couple of spots here with some glue residue, but we'll definitely be able to reuse that decal. All right, let's take this back cover off here. All right. Well, there's what's left of our USB port. This is our ball mount. Just set that aside. Let's take this cable out and separate the two halves here. I believe this is the cable for the mic capsule. This should just slide out. There we go, perfect. It looks like we have a surface mount mini USB over here and thankfully there's no rip pads on the data or power lines. The only rip pad I see is this one mounting pad on the corner of this USB connector. It's a little hard to imagine how this damage took place. The inside portion of this connector looks brand new. And the side that mounts to the uh, motherboard, there's no rip pads on any of those pins there. I hope this isn't red Loctite, because that's gonna be impossible to remove. Well, it's coming off. Cool. I have the board mounted up in the board holder here. You certainly don't need a board holder for a repair like this, but uh, I'm doing this for the camera and I need you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and get this old connector off. I'm just gonna start by adding a couple of dabs of flux to the mounting legs here. Iron set to 375 Celsius. I'm just gonna go around and add a little bit of solder to each of those mounting legs. I think we unfortunately have two lifted pads here, not just one. This one's completely gone and uh, I can already see this one beginning to uh, lift up as well. We need at least one good side to mount the replacement port, otherwise it's just gonna be a really janky repair. So uh, I'm gonna be extra careful removing the right side and hopefully we have two good pads that uh, we can use. All right, uh, let's cut a small piece of solder wick here. Let's clean up these pads. Oh, 
I always cut braid into small pieces like this. You end up saving a lot of material, builds up a lot more heat, and uh, you don't risk burning your fingers. And now for the power and data pins here. All right, let's clean up. All right, guys, well, this repair just got a little bit more challenging, but that's okay. We have two good mounting pads and we have two that are completely gone. Most importantly though, all the data and power lines are still good. Rip pads and broken traces are just part of the game. That in no way means that this microphone is destined for the trash. We have a large ground plane here that we can scrape back and solder to. We'll just have to get a little bit creative with how we solder on the left side of the connector to get a solid and lasting repair. I'm gonna go ahead and put in an order for the right replacement connector. I unfortunately don't have the exact same ones in stock, so um, I'll put that order in and uh, I'll be back in a couple of days. The USB ports have arrived. Picked up this USB assortment pack. There's a hundred ports in here. I paid about $13 for it, which nets out to about 13 cents a port. And that's a great deal for someone like me that's always tinkering and fixing stuff. So there we have it. All right, I found what I believe to be the right port. This is a surface mount mini USB. It's got two little alignment posts over here that should line up with these holes in the board. Let's try that guy on for size. And there is our replacement port. This is our side here with the rip pads where there's nothing to solder down to. So I'm gonna go ahead and start scraping back some of the solder mask over here. I typically do something like this with a fiberglass pen, but in the spirit of keeping this repair to just simple tools, I'm gonna to use this pointy scraper tool I have over here. All right, let's start scraping. Periodically just clean up with a little bit of IPA so that we uh, check our progress and not take it too far. All right, lovely. So here's the game plan. We have our port, we're just gonna solder that in like normal on the right side. And on the left side, we're gonna use this component leg that's gonna attach to each end of the connector and it's gonna anchor the connector down on that pad that we exposed. Let's put a couple of drops of flux on there. Our goal right now is just to anchor it in. So let's go ahead and wet the tip. And let's just start by anchoring in this bottom right corner. Alignment still looks good. Let's do the same thing on the back. This side's looking great and uh, we'll come back and reinforce that. But uh, most importantly, those uh, power and data lines are still properly lined up. Now let's take care of the broken side here. First thing I'd like to do is wet that center pad. Let's put a drop of flux on there. Let's go ahead and wet that pad. All right. Okay, another little drop of flux here. Let's put that component leg in place. I'd like it a little something like that. Let's tack it in. Now let's attach it to the front and back legs. Another few drops of flux. Let's do the front. And let's go back and reinforce the center. Let's trim off that excess, flush with the board. I'm gonna go back and reinforce the right side. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Both those legs are now attached to each other and there's a pretty large ground plane holding them down in the center. So that connector is definitely anchored on there. Let's go ahead and do the pins. A little bit of flux. Now, since I'm not using a chisel tip, I'm not gonna come from the top down over the pins. I'm gonna wet my tip and creep up on them from behind. That should reduce our chances of getting any solder bridges. All right, let's wet the tip. And let's just creep up on those pins one by one. Again. Last two. All right, guys, I think we're done here. 
Let's take a closer look. Now I can already tell I have a solder bridge between these two pins. Those two pins are ground pins and it doesn't matter that they're touching. In fact, you'll experience that quite a bit when you're soldering surface mount pins like this and there's adjacent ground pins. Oftentimes you'll find that they tend to be the ones that are most likely to bridge when you're soldering everything in place. So I have no concerns about that. If nothing else, it's better reinforcement for the pins. All I need to do is make sure that pins three, four, and five aren't touching. Let's take out our multimeter here and put it in continuity mode. Let's see which of our pins are ground. So I'm just touching the shield here and pins one and two are ground, not three, not four, and not five. Now let's check if pins three and four are bridged at all, and they're not. And let's check if pins four and five are bridged, and they're not. And we can even use these vias over here to do our testing. So this one's our test point for pins one and two. There we go. This one's pin three, pin four, no bridge, pin four, pin five, no bridge. Our work here is done, fellas. I'd like to do a quick test. I'm just gonna take out the original cable here. All right, I don't have the uh, audio capsule attached, so I'm not doing an audio test. I just wanna see if the MacBook detects it. So in sound preferences here, we have the internal mic and we have the Blue Yeti. That's what I'm using to record this video. Now let's go ahead and plug this guy in. and we have the blue snowball, excellent. So that tells me that both the power and data lines are working just fine. I have everything laid out here. Let's start by reattaching the capsule. Let's reconnect the mic capsule here. Just line this up and slide it in the rear housing over here. Look at that, beautiful. On this half over here, we have this little bracket for the ball mount. Just rest the ball mount in here. This is the on off LED, just click that guy in and let's carefully marry the two halves. All right, looking good, let's screw it together. Now let's address it back up with the decal. Just gonna warm it up a little bit. All right, folks, we're pretty much done here. Let's give this guy one final test. Let's go ahead and plug this guy in. LED, nice little mic, tilts up and down. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to this mic. All right, guys, I am speaking through the blue snowball and uh, I can see the audio levels jumping up and down, so we're definitely good to go. I'm actually really happy with how this repair turned out. I actually think the fact that we found a couple of rip pads made this demonstration that much more useful. I wanted this to be a quick and simple project targeting some of the beginners out there just to show that uh, that you don't need a massive toolkit when you're just starting out. And um, broken traces, rip pads, that's just part of the game. Whether you open something up and that damage is waiting for you on the inside or you make a mistake and you cause that damage yourself, no big deal. We all need to uh, develop those repair skills and uh, fix stuff like that. So I'm really happy with the outcome. I definitely stand by this repair. In some ways, I actually think it's better than uh, the stock soldering on that connector. There was barely any solder on that factory USB port and uh, the way that I've reinforced that, I, I'm sure that this is gonna be a solid and lasting repair. Having said that, I don't need this mic. I record on a Blue Yeti, which I also repaired myself as well, by the way. But um, what I'd like to do is uh, create a charity auction and sell this guy off on eBay. So. 100% of the sales, 100% of the proceeds from the sale of this mic will go to the American Red Cross. And uh, if that's something that you're interested in participating in, details will be in the video description below. Um, if it does end up going to a channel viewer rather than some random person that finds it on eBay, I'm gonna throw in a little extra something for you guys as well. So if you are the winning bidder, ping me and let me know that uh, this is how you found the auction. That's all she wrote. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Take care.